As you know, innovation is never a straight line from A to B. It's a very complex system of trying things out, failing, starting over again, failing, starting over again, and finally got it where you want it to be. Well, our next guest is such an innovator. He is a Dutch artist, he's an innovator, he's a thought leader. He innovates for a better world, and he works a lot with lights. So we're gonna dim the lights in the studio um, to get you a little bit of sense of, of what he's doing. We're very happy that he's joining us today. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I give you Dan Rozegaarde. Good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening, uh, wherever you are. Uh, thank you uh, for, for being here online. And um, yeah, let's explore how the future looks like. Eh? Um, we've always been talking about cars when we talk about mobility and the future of mobility. But what about highways? What about bicycle paths that you see here? Uh, for the Van Gogh Foundation, to celebrate the 125th anniversary of Van Gogh, we made a bicycle path that charges at daytime via uh, the sun and glows at night. See a short movie here. So here, you know, infrastructure becomes poetry, becomes practical, charging at daytime, glowing at night. And I think that's the way to think about the future, combining different sectors and making something that creates a notion of awe and wonder. And these kind of installations, you know, you can, you can visit them. They're available every night. Uh, you don't need a ticket. A really beautiful way of thinking about mobility in a more futuristic way. Or here, this is one of our most famous highways in the Netherlands, the Afsluitdijk. 32 kilometer built by hand in 1932 to basically make sure that the Dutch don't die, right? <laughs> on the left we have the sea, on the right Amsterdam, Rotterdam, The Hague, where we're broadcasting right, uh, right now. Um, and we were part of the renovation program uh, to highlight the beauty of this famous dike. Built by hand in 1932, this is our true icon, this is our true you know, way of dealing with reality. And these are, we bumped into these kind of beauties. 60 floodgates that uh, uh, rise and lower the walls of water to keep us safe. And we wanted to talk about sustainability, about energy, about future. But at the same time, we realized if we use too much existing technology, like LEDs, drivers, microchips, they would break down eh, because of the salt and the rain. And so one cold night as we were walking there, we realized, hey, but of course, there's already light present on this highway, the light of the Cars, right? The headlights, the headlamps. Can we not use that? Can we not use the waste of the headlights to make an energy neutral landscape of light? Inspired by the wing of a butterfly, which always reuse reflection as well. And so we dragged our Minister of Infrastructure into the story, mimicking the headlights of the car, adding reflective layers of um, uh, micro prismas to the existing building. So this is daytime, and this is nighttime. No battery, no cables, no wires, no microchips, no solar panels. And this is something you can visit every night for free. Yeah, talking about future and mobility. Short. Sure. Thank you. 
we even made that it would work um, from above. Eh? We even made the rooftop work as well. So in the future, when we have flying cars, the project still works. We had to fight for that one, by the way. <laughs> and so here, the beauty of history, eh? the famous blueprint of the architect, um, gets lit and light up by the headlights of the car. So I think when we talk about sustainability, sometimes it's about doing less, eh? less energy, less waste, less light. But sometimes it's also about doing more eh? and sort of upcycling the so-called waste that we have. And this is just a very concrete example of, of what is possible. Or here, this is one of my personal favorite projects, eh? when we talk about well-being of people. This is the world's first urban sun, which cleans public spaces of COVID-19. Okay, he's saying what? Yes. This is the world's first urban sun using very specific far UVC light, which is safe for people and at the same time sanitize public spaces of uh, COVID-19 of the coronavirus. I'll show you a short movie. So I was reading a scientific paper in Nature, you can Google this, it's called Far UVC, um, in 2019, where a group of scientists discovered that, okay, traditional UV that you and I know very well um, kills viruses, but also gives you cancer, right? This is damaging your eyes and your skin, not good. But this group of scientists in New York discovered a far UVC, a shorter wavelength, which appeared to not be dangerous to people or animals, but can still uh, eliminate and sanitize and clean viruses, including COVID. And I was reading this scientific paper and I was like, whoa, <laughs> why are we not doing anything with that? Eh? How can the power of light help us to make places safer and better and more human again? And so we teamed up with scientists from Spain, Japan, USA, uh, Italy, the Netherlands, and built the largest and the first urban sun in the world. So it's a black sphere with that specific light. And basically, it sanitizes the space underneath it. Yeah, it's sort of like a, like a gigantic Im immaterial toothbrush. Yeah? I'm, I'm sort of simplifying it, but you get the picture. And therefore, you're creating a, a place, a space, which is continuously being sanitized of viruses with the speed of light, 300,000 kilometers per second. And we indicated it with a sort of yellow gold barrier where that safer and better zone starts and ends. You know, I don't want my friends anymore to be reduced to, to pixels on a computer screen. And let's use design and science to make places which are better again to meet. And this was the first pilot in Rotterdam. Uh, we did the scientific research to make sure it's safe and that it actually works. And now we're scaling it up to much, much larger for soccer stadium, Olympics, you name it. You know, I think in a crisis time like this, it also forces us again to be creative again, right? We can be mad, sad, blame, wait for somebody else. Or we can say, hey, what can I do? What can we do to change our perspective and make a step forward? And I think that's what this Urban Sun project really embodies. Or here, um, this is something I've been working on in the last two years. So normally the way we celebrate is great, right? We like to celebrate. <laughs> and it's really important to come together as a community, feel connected, with ourselves and the people around us, the world around us. But also, I realize quite often, it's extremely air polluting. Eh? So traditional fireworks, increase of 10% in air pollution. Eh? So 4th of July is the same as a, as a forest fire uh, in West Coast, in, air, in terms of air pollution. That's a bit crazy. Eh? So basically, we're saying, Happy New Year, here's a, here's a bunch of toxic air. Right? <laughs> That's not really our sustainable way of celebrating. So therefore, we launched Spark that you see here, um, organic fireworks inspired by fireflies. We made fireworks made out of biodegradable material that float in the air 
and yeah, try to find a new harmony between people and nature, between celebrating and a notion of awe. And I'll show you a short movie how it was filmed uh, in Bilbao a couple of weeks ago. How can we celebrate in a sustainable way? How can we feel connected with nature? How can we spark a sense of wonder? Inspired by nature, we bring organic lights into the city. Spark, reflect together, celebrate as one. You can visit this uh, live on June 1st until the 3rd of um, uh, June in Bilbao in the, in the public park, no ticket needed, as part of the Wellbeing Summit, a conference about well-being, creative intelligence. Really cool, just come and visit if you like. And I think what I love about this is that, yeah, traditions are important, right? But we need to keep on questioning them and wondering and modernizing them and sort of being in that park and, and seeing them sort of move around like fireflies. It just shows that, that yeah, we can improve um, the world step by step if we have the courage to invest in the new ideas. If we, we, we build it, we try, we're going to make a mistake, right? And we're going to learn from it. Um, what I love about Spark as well is that it's silent, right? So some things you keep of a tradition and some things you modernize and you upgrade. And I think the same for mobility, you know? Some things we will keep, but maybe, you know, why does it always have to be fast? Eh? Can it also be slow? Is slow a value eh? or clean air a value? And I think if we start approaching um, the challenges we're all facing, right, uh, in a new way, there's still a lot to be explored. And hanging out in this way too cold and rainy Bilbao night, I just realized that if we approach the world in that kind of way, there's still so much to be explored yeah. and bring back this notion of wonder and awe. Okay, last one. Um, you know, I became really fascinated with that. How can we look at the world in a different way? Because in the end, it's not about money. It's not about technology, but it's about perspective. There once was a time, not really that long ago, that we thought planet Earth was the center of the universe. <laughs> and all, everything, all the planets, all the sun would turn around it. And then some guys came, 
pretty smart guys that no, 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 that's not actually true. The Earth is turning around the sun, which is 148 million kilometers away from us. And still, we still call it sunset, sunrise, right? So, and I think from now, and we live in a world where we have to change our perspective again as we're facing global ch challenges, as we're facing the mobility or the resource climate. It's called biocentric or egocentric trying to find a new balance between nature and people instead of just trying to dominate it. It's just not working anymore. And all of those ideas were in my brain when I launched the project that you see here, Seeing Stars. Um, I realized one night we have this amazing light performance in our sky, the stars, but we don't see them because of light pollution, right? So I went to a mayor and asked her a very simple question. Will you work with me to switch off all the city lights so we can see the stars? As he said, yes. So this is normal life, light pollution, and this is when we switch them off, seeing the stars again. I'll show you a short movie, and then uh, we're almost going to wrap up. One night, I realized that there's this amazing light performance above us, but we don't see it. It is hidden in our sky. Over 80% of the world population is disconnected from our universe because of light pollution. To bring back the stars, I ask an entire city to switch off all their lights. I'm so proud to switch off all the lights in our city, to see the stars and feel connected with each other. And it was so cool to sort of stand in these city streets. Here, suddenly, design or sustainability was not about adding something, but about removing and about revealing. You know, I didn't design those stars, you know, they've been there for millions of years. But it just shows that in a world where suddenly we're not surrounded by abundance, but about less. How can we make more of less? How can we show the beauty of less and removing the things that we've been adding? This was done in Franeker in Friesland. We will do it again in the city of Leiden as part of the European City of Science. Um, I hope I gave you a little bit of an idea of that sustainability is also about doing more, not just about doing less, and that it can create new beauty, that it can create new values, and we're just scratching the surface um, of that new era. Thank you. Yes. Much done. Very yes. good. Very inspirational. Uh, I, I thank you very much for that. It, it, yeah. it has been awesome. I don't know. I have to stand over yeah, here. Yeah, what should we do? Yeah, yeah that's better, our, I guess. Yeah. Our heads in the stars, right? <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, cool, so, and the stars. It, it, they, yeah, that's they're right. amazing. Yeah, it's like this simple idea. Yeah. Really complicated to execute because you've got to talk to the citizens and the mayor, so, the safety, and you know. So what, I was wondering about that yeah. because, because you, you were the innovator. Yeah. But you're not working alone. No, you of course. Oh, with a team. No. And, and I hope not. No. So how is that working out for you? So working with all these different stakeholders yeah no it's a community project so mm -hmm. I, I i start the project um, and i sort of final curate it yeah but of course you got to work with the entrepreneurs with the city with the, ci the, the civilians yeah, the, the, right. the people who live there um is, that hard? is it hard yeah, to that's do? the biggest chunk of the, uh, of really? the time yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 because you you need to help them to make them part of the dream 
Right. And they also contribute to it, right. you know? So, yeah. of course, the idea is sort of the easiest. Yeah. The idea is the pen, <laughs> but it doesn't mean you can write a book. Right, right. That doesn't mean you can write a good book, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, but yeah. make, make them part of the dream. That, yeah. That's yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. So right. I have to visualize and show that it can be done. Right. Uh, but then they start feeding the project with their right. own knowledge and their that's own dreams. No, I, 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 you can never do it alone. No. I, I think nobody does it. Almost anything. No, no, no. Right? But this yeah, is, it's a network. really good, really good takeaway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Don, thank you very much.